Joel is going to be our children's pastor. He has been faithfully serving as our children's director for the last two years. And this is a special day for Joel. So, Joel, I want to talk to you and Ashley just for a few moments and I have a couple of scriptures I want to read to you about what a pastor is. I know that you know this. If you know Joel at all, the guy studies the Word of God, and so there's nothing that I'm going to tell Joel right now that he probably doesn't already know. But, Joel, just listen with your heart here, man, because being a pastor is an extremely high calling. Over in Ephesians 4, it's talking about Jesus now, and when Jesus went back to heaven and took his throne, it says that he gave some to be apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors and teachers for the equipping of the saints, for the work of ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ, till we all come to the unity of the faith, of the knowledge of the Son of God, to a perfect man, to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ, that we should no longer be children tossed to and fro and carried about by every wind of doctrine, by the trickery of men, by the cunning craftiness of deceitful plotting. But speaking the truth in love may grow up in all things into him who is the head Christ, from, from whom the whole body, joined and knit together by what every joint supplies according to the effective working, by which every part does its share, it causes the growth of the body, edifying itself in love. Jesus gave many different gifts into the body for that purpose right there. You're called to be a pastor. A pastor helps people do that, to grow in God, to love others, and to reach their world. And right now you look out in front of you, and this, these are the, the, the flock. These are the, the ones that God has given you care over to pastor. A pastor is not so much concerned about tasks and organizations and things like that. All of that is just a means to serve and to help these people that God's given you care over to, to, to grow love and reach, to become fully devoted to Jesus. The word pastor itself, uh, practically what that, what that means for you is that throughout the year you'll be doing weddings, you'll be doing funerals, you preach and teach on a regular basis, and, and that's a step for you to do some of those things. But spiritually it means a whole lot more than that. It means that you care about God's people. You're a shepherd. In fact, the word pastor in the New Testament, and you know this, it means shepherd. And I want to read you a passage out of Ezekiel because we can see God's heart. And there are so many passages throughout the Bible that talk about what a pastor is. And I want to read this one to you. And this is, this is a very sober passage because it talks about what God's heart really is. And this is to uh, the leaders of Israel in the Old Testament at a time when their pastors, their shepherds, had done a terrible job. And this is what God says to them. The word of the Lord came to me saying, Son of man, prophesy among the shepherds, the pastors of Israel. Prophesy and say to them, Thus says the Lord God to the shepherds, Woe to the shepherds of Israel who feed themselves. Should not the shepherds feed the flocks? You eat the fat and you clothe yourselves with the wool. You slaughter the fatlings, but you do not feed the flock. The weak and you have not strengthened, nor... Have you healed those who were sick, nor bound up the broken, nor brought back what was driven away, nor sought what was lost? But with force, harshness, and cruelty you have ruled them. So they were scattered because there was no shepherd, and they became food for all the beasts of the field when they were scattered. My sheep wandered through the, all the mountains on every high hill. Yes, my flock was scattered over the whole face of the earth, and no one was seeking or searching for them. You see, Jesus has always been about, and God's heart has always been about people. It's always been about people. That's what this is all about. Jesus died not for a building or an organization. He died for these people. He died for you and I. And Joel, as a pastor, this is what you're called to, is to people, to lead and to shepherd. And we're so proud of you, man. We're so excited we recognize this in you. And so if I could have the elders who are here, elders, if you could come up at this time, we're going to pray over Joel and Dean. Where is Dean? He's probably sitting with the kids somewhere, isn't he? Here he is. Dean is our elder over the children's ministry, and he works very closely with Joel. And so we have asked Dean if he would lay hands on Joel and pray for him. Dear Father, today we come before you, and, and Father, God, Father God, I don't even know what that means standing in your presence and we just in awe of who you are father the master of the universe the lord of heaven's armies and father when moses came in your presence you asked him to remove his sandals father god but father we're just thankful so much for your son jesus christ he made us righteous father god 
He's made Joel righteous. So today we come before you and we can keep our shoes on, Father God, because we stand in your presence. And Father, in your word it says that when a man finds a wife, he finds a treasure and receives favor from the Lord. And Father, we're so thankful for Ashley. That's besides Joel. And Father God, I've seen growth in this man that I've never seen before, Father God. And I know there were times when the enemy tried to sidetrack Joel and there were obstacles and stumbling blocks in his way to, to lead to this path, Father God. And sometimes I was one of those stumbling blocks and obstacles. And Joel, I ask you for forgiveness for that. And I just pray that this church and the staff and the pastors and the elders, we won't be stumbling blocks, Joel. We're here to serve you and to serve alongside with you. And we just know the heart of these kids. They see in you, Father God, they see the Holy Spirit that you send down to your son, Joel. And Father, you said in your word that Joel is your masterpiece. He has created new in Christ Jesus so that he can do all the good works you've planned for him long ago. And Father, today we start a new good work in Pastor Joel. And it's such an honor to pray with Joel and just to be in your presence. And we thank you so much for your mercy and your love and most of all your grace that we can stand right here and talk to you, Father God. And we just love Joel's heart. And Father God, I just ask you that, Holy Spirit, you come into Joel and you teach him what it means to fear Father God. And as you fear God, Father God, and with a new reverence, he'll come to a big understanding of who you are. And we just ask that we rebuke any forces of darkness or evil that's acting a way that's trying to suppress Joel. And we ask him that his full rights, his birthright, as an adopted son of you, Father God, comes into full fruition. We just thank you for that. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, we would like to invite you afterwards. We have cake and some refreshments and to come celebrate. Yeah, the kids, yeah, yeah, just for you guys. And, uh, and just, uh, just stop in in the purple room in the lobby in the back and, and Jewel and Ashley are gonna be back there. You can slap them a high five, uh, just you know, give them something, bless them. And, uh, but we will invite you to that celebration. So ladies and gentlemen, I'm honored to present Pastor Jewel and his wife, Ashley Schley. <laughs> 